What's up, everybody? Now we're on the AFC South for our 2023 division standing predictions. Uh, so AFC South, um, historically for the past few years, everyone likes to say that uh, the AFC South has been the weakest division. Definitely see where they're coming from. It hasn't been a powerhouse by any means. But, you know, the Titans, they've been a consistently good team for years now uh, that just plays winning football, smart, good, very well coached with Mike Vrabel. Um, you know, the Colts uh, last year, last season um, was a complete debauchery with Matt Ryan. He fell off a cliff. But before that, you know, they took some journeyman quarterbacks uh, in the twilight of the careers. I mean, you don't want to really call Philip Rivers a journeyman, but, you know, you get what I mean. Older quarterbacks way past their peak uh, that were cast away by the team they were on before. Uh, and then they had Wentz the next year. And everybody thought Wentz, I thought Wentz was going to be a complete crapshoot, but he played all right. I mean, a lot of that's because of Jonathan Taylor, but even the Texans, um, they've, uh, they haven't been great the past few years at all. But again, uh, they were another team up until, you know, the whole scandal happened that they were, uh, consistently a good football team making the playoffs almost every year. Uh, you look at the Jags, uh, they just came out of nowhere last year, but let's just, uh, let's focus on this year now and not play into narratives. Um, but so I got, this is going to surprise a lot of people. People can be scratching their heads when, when I say this, but I'm going to break it down why I, I feel this way. I got the Tennessee Titans winning the division this year. I got the win in the division. It was a tough pick for me between the Jags and the Titans. I had the Jags at first um, initially. I waited on it a little bit, did some more deep thinking. I really like what I see from the Titans, uh, what they put together this year in the offseason. And um, I'm going to get into what I don't like about the Jags later. Uh, let's just focus on the Titans right now. Ryan Tannehill. To me, he all he does, all he knows how to do is play winning football. He doesn't do, he doesn't play sexy football. He's not going to wow you with his arm strength, with his arm talent, with these types of throws that you're going to see from a Drew Brees, Patrick Mahomes, um, or, you know, Peyton Manning. Joe Burrow, none of that. You're not going to see none of that from him. But just like Alex Smith, he knows how to put his team in position to win with his mind, with his with his experience, and with his capable, more than capable arm and ability to read defenses and to make the right plays, the right time, and the right moments. Uh, so you know, uh, Brian Tano model consistency uh, with the with the Titans. Um, Last season, uh, you know, he missed some games last year. Uh, it's re reason why I believe he threw for under three thousand yards, and he didn't look. He just didn't. He looked like he was on the decline, the a really bad decline. But he had absolutely no wide receivers to throw the football to, like no one. Um, so I can't hold that against him. In the past, like in Miami, um, I saw him put up really good passing yard numbers above thirty five hundred yards with bad receiving cores. Uh, yeah, I'm not really going to expect that from him um, as much now at an old age. Not only that, even those, I think the Titans receiving core he had last year was the worst wide receiving core he's ever had in his career. But who do they add? D-Hop, Mr. DeAndre Hopkins. That's what they had to the roster in the offseason. That guy was on pace for like 1,400, 1,500 yards until he got injured last year. He's the real deal. Uh, I don't got to explain anything about DeAndre Hopkins. He can do make everything run absolutely any route on the route tree he's gonna still he can still put reel in that spectacular catch acrobatic diving catch jump ball what have you like there's no covering this guy you need safety help no matter what when deandre hopkins is on the uh, is on the field i don't think age is gonna be an issue and i don't think the injury he suffered last year is gonna be something that's gonna uh, make him fall off a cliff at all um you combine that with king henry i mean everybody i keep hearing from the great vine from fo a football talk that Derrick Henry is past his best. He's, you can't depend on him anymore to the point where he was before. And, you know, he's just not that guy anymore. You, he's not Derrick Henry. He's too old. He's on the wrong side of 30, but the guy put up like 1500 rushing yards last year, 1400, 1500 yards rushing. I think it was 1500. If it wasn't 1500, it was 1400. And, but like, and it was over well over four and a half yards of carry. 
Um, so four and a half, four and a half, four and a half or more yards per carry last year. I don't know what you guys are talking about with Derrick Henry. You got Ryan. So you combine with Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry, DeAndre Hopkins, and you got Traylon Burks, Nick Westbrook, two other, two other capable wide receivers to blossom and fully take on that supplementary role as the number two and number three wide receivers to complement DeAndre Hopkins. You got a great offense right here. Um, but they do got the worst offensive line in the NFL. I can't I can't swerve around that. They got the worst offensive line in the NFL. But what they were a bad offensive line last year. They were a very bad offensive line last year. But Derrick Henry still ran for his 1,500 yards like King Henry you expect, like the King Henry you expect from old. And he's going to put up 1,450 yards again. That in itself is going to move the ball. Ryan Tannehill is going to do what he does best. And that is take take advantage of play action take advantage of reading the defense just taking what the defense gives you there's still defense is going to have to stack the box against the titans with derrick henry uh it's, they're going to benefit a whole lot from play action uh, a whole lot from run blitzes and you know just zone coverage in general um you know when you have such a great running back you typically leave, leave your uh, middle linebackers in zone coverage and what have you um and sometimes even throw the safety in down there as well too so DeAndre Hopkins is in a lot of favorable matchups. And not only that, like I mentioned before, Traylon Burks, I think he's gonna he I think he was a rookie last year. I think he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna improve a whole lot. I'm predicting probably like 850 yards, 900 yards from him in that uh in that number two, in the number two role. Ryan Tannell, say what you want about him, but he's always made um the wide receivers around him better. He did it with uh Devontae Parker way back. Um Devontae Parker, is it? Um in uh in uh Miami. Oh yeah, Devontae Parker, um, Kendall Wright, uh Corey Davis. You know, the guy just makes guys around him better. He's a lot like Alex Smith, and he gets disrespected too much. I'm not here for the Ryan Tannehill slander. Is he a top five quarterback? No. Has he been a top 10 quarterback in his career? He has. I don't want to hear that he has never been. He has been a top 10 quarterback for a couple of seasons in his career. He's always been uh, in the in the top 12, uh, you know, uh, realm. And it's he's he's still here, guys. Like he's not he's not washed up. He was just a, a product of a very bad supporting cast last year. And he doesn't have the issue anymore. Now he has the luxury of playing with the top five wide receiver in the NFL in, um, in DeAndre Hopkins. Couple, couple that with Derrick Henry, um, and these, you know, uh, the number two receivers he got right now, um, uh, he's uh, he's with Nick Westbrook, and what have you. So he's gonna have a great year, uh, a, a big bounce back year, um, and another reason why I got uh, I got um, you know, uh, I picking the Titans over the Jaguars because let's be real, um, as much as I'm gassing up the the Titans uh offense offense right now. The Jaguars are probably even better. Uh, they don't have as good of a running back, but they have prob probably the deepest wide receiving core in the NFL. They got a better quarterback right now in Trevor Lawrence just because the guy's got crazy arm talent. He's in the peak of his career. Um, there he can make so he can make throws every down that Tannehill probably can't make. Um, just because with age. Um, and even in Tannehill's prime, he was never a crazy flashy quarterback. That wasn't his memo, but he doesn't need that. He that, that doesn't need that doesn't need to be. You don't need to be that in order to win the NFL, and he's proven that, and so many other guys have proven it. But the defense, the defense side of the ball, uh, the Titans' defense is um, it's a good defense. It's it's the best defense in this division by far, uh, and you know, the the front seven man like Jeffrey Simmons, Danico Autry, Aziz Al Shair. Aziz Al Shair, man, he uh, he, when you every time you watch the Titans game, there's always some plays that he makes some critical third downs and what have you, pass deflection stuff like that. He he's a good player. He's a he's a, he's a quality guy. Uh, you know, uh, as as a linebacker. Then you look at uh their secondary. They had a great great addition in getting in Sean Murphy Bunting, uh, from Tampa. He had a very good season last year. He's uh he's gonna be he's gonna be a great number one cornerback for them. Uh very good, very solid guy. He'll be able to win most of his matchups. Then you got, you know, a great safety duo in uh Amani Hooker and uh Kevin Biard. 
Kevin Biard is kind of basically, um, along with uh, Harold Landry, Kevin Biard probably, I would say, is probably the 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 leader of that defense, the heart and soul when it comes to leadership. And he's kind of really been in here from the beginning, uh, the early stages when they got Tannehill and they built this this uh, championship nucleus, not championship, sorry, not championship, but a uh, consistent uh, nucleus that has brought into the playoffs as far as the AFC title game one year. Uh, and you coupled that with Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel played with Bill Belichick on those uh, Patriots dynasties. So he knows a thing or two about how to get the best out of your defensive players. And it shows in his play calling. The the Titans are always a very well-coached team. And they always overperform to what people expect from them. Because people just love underrating Ryan Tannehill. Um, so, yeah, I got them winning the division. It's going to be a tough, 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 tough task for them. It's going to be the Jags and the Titans. They're going to finish maybe with an identical record or with, um, with one game apart. Um, but... Jacksonville Jaguars, what do I got them? So, again, I got the Titans getting that fourth seed. They're going to get that fourth seed. Uh, they're going to be the last, the lowest-ranked division winner, but they will be a division winner in my eyes. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars, I got them winning, getting the third wild card, wild card spot after the Buffalo Bills with that one. I got them getting the, the first wild card spot, and I got the Cleveland Browns getting the number two wild card, wild, wild card spot. But uh, the Jags, man, let's get into the Jags. The Jags, man, that that offense is going to be crazy. You got Trevor Lawrence. Um, they acquired Calvin Ridley, uh, in uh in the off season. Um, I know he's missed a lot of games. Uh, uh, he's coming off a season where he missed a lot of games with Atlanta. Um, but you know, there's no reason for me to believe that he's he can't go back to his Pro Bowl ways. Um, that he uh that he was with uh with with the Falcons. Combine that with Christian Kirk, thousand yard receiver. Zay Jones, thousand yard receiver. Evan Ingram, top ten tight end. Um. Uh, and they got a they got another bad offensive line, just like um, just like the Titans. Uh oh, and uh, Travis Etienne, um, Etn Etn. Sorry, I'm really bad at pronouncing names. I could hear someone's name a million times on TV, and I'm still gonna butcher their last name. But it is what it is. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, he's another great running back. Uh, do I think he's going to be as good as Nick Chubb, Derrick Henry, uh, Saquon, um, any of those guys? No, I don't. Uh, but he can. he's going to be, be a great change of pace guy for them. You know, I think the Jaguars are probably going to pass the ball probably like 70% of the time, 60, 70% of the time. Um, and uh, yeah, like they're going to be in the shotgun all the time. Doug Peterson loves the shotgun as well. And, but he's going to be, he, when they need to run the football, they can run the football. This offense is certified. It speaks for itself, but there's a whole other side of the football. This defense is just bad. It is a bad defense the Jaguars got. You know, let me think of a strength they have. Their pass rush, all right. So their pass rush. They have a good pass rush, man. They got uh, Trayvon Walker coming off a very good rookie year. Uh, and Josh Allen, another good uh, another good pass rusher. So they could put up a top 10 pass rush in the NFL. They could put up a lot of sacks. But I don't – it's not going to be, you know, like – uh, a 2015 Broncos pass rush. It's not going to be nothing like that. It's not going to be like a 49ers pass rush we saw with DeForest Buckners and Bosa. It's not going to be anything like that. And outside of the pass rush, their secondary is trash. They don't have a good secondary. The linebacking core, well, like I mentioned before, yeah, they have a good pass rushing linebacking core. But as far as being run stoppers and pass pass coverage, they're not very good. So, you know, their defense just isn't going to hold up. And the way I picture this Jaguars team looking, they're going to score so many points in such quick fashion with freaking Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, freaking stack receiving core, Trevor Lawrence. This is going to be his third year. I don't have to worry about a sophomore slump from him. He is what he is. What he is. And he had an incredible comeback last year as well, too, in the playoffs. This guy is big time. 
but they're going to score and go run up the field so fast and put up so much points that their suspect bad defense is going to get no breathing time. And in a sense, it's going to be a detriment detriment for them. You know, when you have a terrible defense, the best thing you want to do is, um, you know, uh, keep them off the field as much as you want. And I know like basically what you think for that is like, just don't, don't do, don't do three and outs. Um, that's, that's gonna, you know, um, you know, keep them off like that, that, that three and outs is what's going to keep them on the field. But there's a whole other side that's actually that you won't think of. And that's basically scoring in freaking two, three minutes. That's how good this offense is. I think they're going to put up such crazy numbers that there's going to be high flying offenses, but with, you know, in getting massive chunk yards out the shotgun spread offense type of deal that this defense is going to be on the field so much. They're going to get tired out. It's going to amplify the weaknesses they already have at a much higher level that, you know, it's, it's going to not going to help them in the long run. But again, I got them getting the throw wild card spot. They're going to be in the playoffs. Don't get me wrong, but that's why I got the Titans over them. I think the Titans are more complete. They're better coach, no shade of Doug Peterson, but I like Mike Vrabel better as a coach, especially with the identity of this team that, uh, you know, you're going to get, you're going to get someone like arena football vibes from this uh, football squad. Like a lot of people think of with the 98 uh, Minnesota Vikings, uh, you know, when they had Cunningham, Chris Carter, Randy Moss, uh, their defenses what wasn't very good. It was actually better. It was a lot better than this Jaguars defense. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a strong point. And what amplified that versus like what made it worse was the fact that they're just going 80 yards on the field, getting touched on so quickly that the def- offense is always on the field again, even as sense with Indianapolis with the Colts as well too, with Peyton and Dungy, um, they're off their defense again it was better than what the jaguars have right now but you know scoring in bunches like that it just your defense is essentially it's like a complete 180 from doing three and outs it's a good thing scoring obviously but you're kind of putting yourself in that same in that same predicament um in a in a such uh you know stark starkly different way but it still ends up being that way that's what's going to be a weakness with the jaguars and I think the offensive line will probably cause them some issues. Uh, it's the point where, you know, they're going to be throwing the football so much that uh, they'll, they'll, there'll be points in the game where the sacks will be an issue. The pressures will be an issue. Um, you might get some picks because of that, especially in, uh, you know, the pivotal games. I think the Titans, basically the two game, this division is going to be defined by the games that, you know, those two games between the Jaguars and the Titans. I think the Titans will win one of the games and I think the Jaguars will win the other one. Um, maybe maybe the Titans could win both, but it's going to be defined by that and in a, a bunch of other games. And when they play other good pass rushes, I think it will end up being an issue. The Titans it won't be an issue as much because they can just run the ball down your throats. It's not they can kind of play uh, play to their strengths and avoid put their put their weaknesses, mask their weaknesses. Um, whereas the Jaguars, I get it. Etienne, Travis Etienne, he's good, but you can't pound the rock with him. He's not Derrick Henry. So that's why I got um, the Titans winning the division. It's going to raise a lot of eyebrows, but there's a method to my madness. Could I be wrong? Yeah, I could be wrong. But worst case scenario, I think that, you know, the Jaguars will, my picks will be wrong in the sense that the Jaguars will win the division and the Titans will get their wild card spot. But I'm sticking with the Titans for winning the wild card spot. As far as like the three and four go, I mean, this is tough, man. Um, because the Colts and the Texans, they're, they're both bad teams. Uh, the reason why I am picking the Colts is because of the fact that um, their defense is a little bit better. Their defense is a little bit better. Um, as far as uh the quarterback position goes, you know they're both rolling with uh with the rookie quarterbacks. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like flipping a coin for me about the Colts versus the uh, the Texans. But, um, you know, the Colts, the Colts are better defensively, though. You know, um, they got DeForest Buckner. Well, also, they got um, DeForest Buckner and Shaquille Leonard. Though those are their two best defensive players are a lot better than um the Texans two best defensive players. I'm really big on Damian Pierce, but um to the point, I mean, I don't think it's going to be uh I mean, again, I got I got the Colts going 3, 
Texans going four. They're both going to have bad losing records. Probably be a game separating them, but you get my point. But yeah, Titans getting that fourth seed. Jaguars getting that third wild card spot. You heard it from me.